Um, we do have some time for questions and answers. So I'm going to hand it over um, to our uh, moderator and um, IP, Shantala Hanya, to um, take some questions and uh, talk through some things with Shannon and Aurora. So thank you all. Thank you, Sophie. Uh, Shannon, Aurora, thank you for the great presentation. I uh, hope you can all hear me. Um, this uh, first question to you, Aurora. Uh, does the pre and post test comes in Spanish? Hi, N not at this moment, but it is in it is in the works. Uh, we are planning to get that in Spanish. So um, stay tuned. We will let you know as soon as we have it available in Spanish. And the rest of the materials will also be available as soon as possible, right? Correct, correct. We're trying to have the whole curriculum, all the activities and the pre and post uh, training questions. So yes, um, everything. So we'll, we'll let you know, stay tuned for that. Thank you. Um, Shannon, this question to you, and we may have to come back to uh, for the answer later, is we, the, one of the, the in the resident room, what's the best practice in the CDF situation? So I think that's uh, uh, Shannon Arora. Do you guys have any input on that? If not, we'll bring it back to the office over. I think we. We should take some time to look more deeply into that question, Shantala, and bring it back. Aurora, do you have anything when it comes to carpet specifically? No, I agree. We'll, we'll bring it back in the office hour. Yes, we'll we'll get the EPA registered product or to whether the steam cleaning, what is the recommendation? We'll work with CDC to make sure we address that up appropriately. Um, the next question, uh, Shannon, is uh, keeping the toilet brush in the resident room. Do we have, uh, do they need to, um, uh, is there any recommendation that they can uh, uh, keep the toilet brush in the room or uh, can they bring it back to the cart? Um, so if you can address that. Yeah, um, I believe it should be brought back to the cart, but stored properly. Um, so that we don't provide any more cross contamination. Um, do you have anything to add with that, Shantala? I'm not sure exactly for policy why. I think what that I, recommends. I agree, Shannon. I think the uh, facility has to have a policy and procedure. They also need to do a risk assessment for their building. Uh, for example, if you have a dementia patients in the room, uh, so in your facility, right? Especially the memory care unit or the dementia patients in a regular room. So you don't want to keep anything which uh, can affect their safety. So when you have a licensing and certification visit, they look at your policy and procedure as well as your uh, uh, patient criteria. If there is anything uh, when you leave it in the room, will it affect uh, the patient's safety? If there is no safety issue, you can leave it as designate the toilet brush in the room. So again, so look mm -hmm. at your uh, policy, policy and procedure and do your risk assessment. And we have seen buildings where they have kept the uh, uh, toilet brush in the bathroom, uh, designated to the bathroom, especially uh, uh, isolation patient room. And if you also can use the uh, disposable ones for the isolation room, if you're disposable heads. So there is a several options you have, uh, but we can go, uh, if you have more questions, so send uh, all your questions to our way we can address for pertaining to your building uh the next one i have is uh, um okay where is the i think there are several questions coming up let me go back to the chat uh Shannon. okay so uh let's see So question is for, uh, flash, okay, false lashes. Okay, so this is something which is, uh, the question was regarding the uh, uh, EVS staff having false lashes and facial piercing on EVS staff. Uh, this is an infection control issue. Not really. <laughs> uh, nails over half an inch is a different one. Uh, but I think we can bring back that to, uh, 
in for the individual so we can address that how to manage uh so um aurora this question to you my dear it's a discharge residence room pillowcases sent out to the laundry um but what is the proper way to clean those pillows um i'm not sure uh, about that one Do i you think have any it's uh, uh, i have uh, some feedback and then we can again we can bring it back if that doesn't really our answer doesn't address your question uh so uh, this is uh, uh, based upon the type of pillows right so the pillowcases whether uh, whether it is uh, um, some or many of them has uh, uh, the cotton pillowcases can be washed. So then uh, then you can uh, go through the laundry. So that will be a, uh, they have a good process. So then it should not be a problem. It all depends upon what material you have. Chandana, if you want, if you have more questions pertaining to. So to give us more detail, uh, reach out to the email which we are going to uh, share with you. Uh, then we can address our team can address. Um, so I think, uh, the next one is, uh, okay. I hear that again, it comes back to a lot of questions comes up on uh, a toilet brush. I think we address some of them. So we may be able to address again in our, uh, office hour, uh, more, um, uh, then the question is, um, can we use the toilet mop between the patient room with iso any isolation? So, Shanna, this question for you. Uh, can we use toilet mop between patient room with any isolation? So, I'm, I'm an, if I'm understanding correctly, Wana, your asking question is, if, um, if you have a two patients in an isolation, two different rooms, uh, two different isolation room, using the same toilet brush or to or the toilet mop, is that okay? So if you can come off of mute, so Shannon can understand the question to address. That'll be great. So I think maybe she's still on mute, uh, Shannon. Uh, maybe we had to. We can address that uh, more clearly on the uh, during the office hour. But we don't want to take anything between the patient room, right? Yes, we would want to use a new mop. Um, we're not wanting. Once again, that could cause cross contamination. So we're definitely going to want to use a new mop, a new mop for each room. Um, Anything else to add with that, Shantala? You're right. I think we can expand more at the office hour regarding um, the bathroom infection prevention and control for EBS as well. It seems like we're getting a lot of really great questions regarding yes, this. I think so. Um, the question again, Marina talks about in SNP, you cannot leave a toilet brush or mops in the bathroom. It, it depends uh, as we address. So licensing and certification, because I did talk to licensing and certification. So it depends upon your facility population. And we have uh, several facility who have kept the uh, um, toilet brush, not the mops, toilet brush uh, in, the, in the bathroom. Uh, so it all depends upon you had to do your risk assessment. Um, and uh, I think uh, I address it's uh, more. Um, and well, is, uh, welcome to come off mute if you have questions that you want to uh, vocalize, uh, or feel free to put some more in the chat. Thank you, Shantala, for, for moderating all these great questions. Um, and again, our office hours will address stuff uh, that we haven't addressed. Yes. So Angela, I do see a question in the chat that I don't think we answered. Um, what's a good way to teach about ATP, mon ATP monitoring to line EBS staff and show the benefits to leadership, even with the added costs? So, do you want to expand on that? Yes. So ATP is a good tool, but um, it's expensive. And uh, so usually it gives you the when you're collecting so how much organic material is on the surface is what it is picking up. So what we can, what you, 
what we have used when we go to the facilities, what we we used the fluorescent marker, what you saw in our, one of the, the hand hygiene video on the pen pal video. So using the glow germ and applying it on the uh, on the high touch areas and then going back and then looking at the staff, whether they were able to clean it, there is a twofold. Uh, are they cleaning the high touch areas? You can uh, address that as well as uh, if they have removed that glow germ appropriately, right? So that gives you whether they're the elbow grease. Do they have enough elbow grease to make sure that the pressure to make sure that all the uh, they're able to clean the uh, pick up all the um, pathogens or the organisms or the germs uh, in that environment. So. Um, you can use the ATP, but uh, what we have seen uh, when we use the, the fluorescent marker is where uh, the staff gets to know more versus the, just the ATP gives you the number. It's up to, up to your facility to use either one. Um, and uh, I think there was a couple of other questions. Uh, Shannon is, are we still using hoppers for cleaning soil linen in facilities? Uh, Brenda, if we can come off of mute, that'll be great too. We can address that uh, because I'm not understanding. So why are we still using hoppers for cleaning soil linen in the facility? So the sum of the questions. Hello. Go ahead, go ahead. Brenda. Sorry. Um, so yes, our facility um, has gone back to using cloth wipes and now they're wanting to um, use like the hopper for rinsing prior to it going back to EVS for um, proper cleaning of the linen. So understanding is that uh, your staff, your facility is using the cotton cloth, the, the, the towels to, to clean the rooms. No, to clean, th this is not regarding EBS um, cleaning, it's to patient care. Okay, so patient care, so like, okay. Um, maybe I did not understand the question. If you can repeat one more time, Brenda, if not, so we can send us an email, we can address that. Okay, so my question is, um, is it still a good practice to use hoppers for rinsing cloth materials um, for peri care, is that something that we still consider acceptable um, process? Um, that's not a good idea, but uh, see where how uh, the environmental contamination you're looking at, right? So then, to especially uh, uh, when you're using why they're using anything which is reusable is the first thing you had to see. Is it uh, is that only one one particular patient or it is how it is used? So I think Brenda, I think we'll take it off the line and if you can uh, reach out to uh, HAI program or to uh, HSAG program, so then we can address that particular question pertaining to your facility. That's something. Uh, uh, it's. Uh, more detail we had to talk. I understand. I will do that. Thank you. Um, so the next question is, uh, um, before um, before I let Sophie have, I have a couple of questions. Um, for LA County Public Health, that one per visitor, per resident visit, right? Okay, so this is related to... Uh, COVID, I'm assuming. However, few visitors not following proper PPE and it is a challenge for the staff to talk to them. And how do we do that? So I think this is more of a COVID related question, uh, but you really need to follow up with uh, LA County Public Health uh, because uh, it, this is their guidance. Um, uh, um, but it's... Uh, uh, if you can send us an email, so we will address that, uh, how to manage the visitation. Um, uh, then, uh, I think, um, Shannon, I think it's, I'm going to bring back a couple of questions which was asked yesterday. Um, I think that'll be a good one for this audience if, it did, if they did not participate. One of the question was, uh, 
uh, we recommended not to use the spray bottle for cleaning. Uh, if you can uh, just address that, why we don't, why you don't recommend uh, um, using spray bottle? Yeah, that's a great question, Chandala. So the liquid within the spray bottle, when you're spraying it, is becoming aerosolized, and that can really serve as pose as a safety risk for your staff because it can be inhaled um, as well as get into their eyes. So we really don't want to. We really recommend not using a spray bottle and using the pour bottles instead, just for the safety of your staff. Okay, thank you. Um, and do you recommend a squirt bottle instead of the spray bottle? Can they use the squirt bottle? Uh, we recommend that over a spray bottle, yes. Because mm -hmm. that's going to be not as aerosolized, of course. Thank you. Um, Aurora, the next question, which was asked by uh, many of them yesterday, is uh, um, should the staff remove the gloves inside the room and then can they wash their hands or you do the hand hygiene inside the room? So or should they, do they need to come off, come out of the room to do their hand hygiene? Um, I believe they can um, perform hand hygiene um, after, I mean, come out of the room and, and perform the hand hygiene there. Um, and it depends too, like if the patient is in isolation, then um, you wanna um, do that same thing, um, clean your, perform hand hygiene um, outside the room. Yes, um, you're but right. If, but if the patient is like in C. diff, um, you wanna wash your hands and you wanna do it um, with soap and water. So that would be inside the room. So um, just to make sure that for any time you have an isolation patient room, uh, what is your policy, especially for C. diff patients, right? So that's, uh, you need to work with your staff. Um, and uh, the going from, um, uh, Shanna, this question for you, are EVS supposed to use uh, one cleaning cloth for the entire room or um, so, and do they need to change their gloves in between the uh, task? Yes. So we're definitely going to want to use multiple microfiber cloths in the different areas of the room. Um, remember, you want to go from clean to dirty. Uh, so we don't want to create cross-contamination. So it's going to be important for staff to make sure they're completing hand hygiene within each region um, or areas of the room, as well as using different microfiber cleaning cloths. Thank you. Um, Aurora, this question was uh, uh, asked yesterday again. Oh, it is the weather is so hot. I want to, can I keep my water bottle, at least my water bottle? So what's your recommendation? <laughs> I know we said that when you're cleaning and, you know, or you're setting up your cart, you shouldn't have any water bottles. But I believe you touched on it, something about Cal Osha, correct? Yesterday, you want to? Cal Osha. Cal Osha. Mm -hmm. Do yes. you want to elaborate on that? Yes, uh, just because like you don't want to, whether it is for your nursing staff or for the EVS staff, so you don't want to keep any uh, uh, food or drinks or anything, um, chemicals, especially the chemicals. So because of uh, exposure um, to the chemicals though, and then the uh, safety for the employees. So you had to look at the uh, employee safety uh, again. You don't want to keep the water bottle next to where you keep your urine specimen on the counter, right? So, or to other supplies. And then, the, again, you all know how the, uh, the residents will come. They'll be touching everything. And then you don't want to have your uh, disinfectant next to your water bottle. So the Cal OSHA recommendation is safety for yourself. Um, Shannon, the next question came up was uh, um, microfiber cleaning cloths versus cotton cleaning cloths. Um, can you address that, please? Yeah, so I think we recommend using microfiber cleaning cloths over the cloth. Um, it, just for best practices, they provide really great friction and also work better with the chemicals that you're using. Um, do you, you want to expand on that at all, though, Shantala? Uh, yes, I think it's the, but yeah, part of it is we uh, also discussed yesterday is uh, um, some of the chemical products, right? So when you're using the the product so then that may bind to the cotton towels so then you may not uh, get the efficacy uh, for example the quaternary ammonium so you have uh, you're spending more uh, money on the product but you feel like oh uh, why do i have an uh, mdro issue in my building 
So then you will be looking at, okay, is that your tools, what you're using is appropriate? Yes, you have, uh, you have the disinfectant, but when it binds with the uh, cotton material, so then there is efficacy is gone. So then you're really, you're just cleaning the environment, not disinfecting. So disinfecting, you're not really killing the germ, uh, any germs. So uh, that's the uh, guidance. Um, and yes, some of uh, some of us uh, did go uh, changing that process, and then it takes some time. Uh, and also, when you're using the microfiber cloth, you also need to look at uh, um, how many uses you can. Uh, do right so then after certain uses every time every time it uh, you're using it and then send it to wash so when it comes back so then you will start looking at the material start thinning out on the, all the fibers will be gone so is that effective so so those are all the things you had to uh, look at and um, uh, Shannon uh, also like I'll, I'll go back to this and since we are talking about the microfiber cloth uh, there was a question and uh, we learned recently regarding when you're using the quaternary ammonium products or quads, so then not, not to soak um, every all the cleaning cloth. Uh, so you, do you want to expand on that? Sure. So when you're fully saturating your a big a bunch of microfiber cloths with the quat agent, a lot of the times the quat will actually bind to just one or two or a few of those cloths. And, you know, the disinfecting agent is then only on those couple of cloths rather than each and every single one. So that's why it's really recommended that you use a pour bottle or a bucket and put individual microfiber cloths, soak it in each time you're using it rather than just having them all soaked into one bucket. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I think and we have time for one more, Shantala. What do you think? I think so. Uh, right now, so I don't see anything. Many of them were related to you. Let me double check. Okay, Rani has a question. So Rani, you can just come off of mute. Go ahead and then ask the question. And can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, th thank you so much. And I'm sorry, I just didn't know how to ask a question, but this is so important. Two things, the hopper. Um, can we really revisit that at another point in time? Because what the question is, I don't know what that person's question is, but my question is, when you're using, like, let's say a patient has a lot of stool, okay, mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of stool. Well, you're not going to put that right in the laundry barrel, because then that's going to make it difficult for the EVS staff. So um, I'm trying to understand if you're saying don't rinse it out in the hopper then. So then it what is the option? So that's where Rani. So then we will address this one, this particular question. So since uh, uh, this is all depends upon, as you said, how can you rinse the 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 whole the sheet if it is the whole sheet versus a small piece of clothing versus so how this uh, uh, after you rinse it. So let's go back and then we will revisit how to address this so that we can give you the step by step uh, information so that way uh, because after they rinse it who is responsible to clean that environment, right? So then, uh, yeah. so there is several steps we had to go back. I just want to give a small bits of answer and it's yes or no versus let's think it through and then let's give you the guidance. So we'll bring it back um, in one of the, uh, like during the office hour, if we can, if not, we will, all these questions will be addressed as and frequently asked questions and we will bring it, uh, address this question uh, and, who uh, post it on our website. Okay, thank you so much. And I'll I'll figure out how to ask questions so I don't have to do it this way. Thank you so much. No, 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 it's good. It's always good. 